show. Hey, hey. How you going, Will? Good morning, or good evening. Uh, I don't know. Good afternoon. I can never remember what time it is over there. How you doing, Figzy? I'm good. Yourself? Oh, I'm good. Well, actually, yeah, I'm mostly good. Um, I had a... I've been having fucking trouble with the games coming in through the mail lately. That's not I, good. No, I... I uh, I ordered a game from uh, Amazon because it was a it was one of those fifty percent deals. I I, I, I spied and uh, it showed up and it was just this is lying in the yard because I got a I got an enclosed type of front porch type thing and they just I don't know they threw it over the wall and it landed in the mud <laughs> and I opened it up and you know it was fine but the, and it was sealed but the the seal was ripped on the on the spine and. And again, and it, like every fucking other game I've been getting lately, the fucking disc was loose. I'm just mad. I've got a tip for you. So obviously, I've bought, I've bought a lot of games in the mail over the last few years, and I've had a lot of problems. Uh, three years ago, I got a PO box, and getting a PO box, you don't have any of those issues. Your mail is actually there earlier because it gets put in like as soon as it gets to the post office. So I highly recommend getting a PO box if there's any like dramas of your mail service at all. Yeah, but yeah, but then I gotta go to go to the post office to get my shit. I don't know. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call Amazon, complain like a Karen, and see if I can get a free game out of them. <laughs> so we're anyway, on episode number twenty seven. Who have we got on today? We have. Oh, I'm gonna try to say this. He taught me right before we came on. Dirk Stewart from the Netherlands, and uh, he can tell me if I said it correct or not when he comes on. So uh, bring him on in. Bring him on in, please. Hey, hey everyone. Well. Welcome to the 10 points, game. Will. 10 points. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I nailed it. But, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be calling you Dirk for the rest of the evening. I hope you don't mind. Perfectly fine. No. <laughs> so welcome Hi. to the show, Dirk. How are you doing? Thank you very much. I'm doing fine. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it's an honor. <laughs> I've been watching all of the other episodes, so amazing to be on the show and talk oh, about games for me. Idea, How cool can yeah. it be? Oh, I'm glad I'm glad you've been watching the shows and you know what you're in for, so there's no surprise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> By the way, talking about the games from Amazon, if you're buying PS4 or PS5 games and you want to keep them sealed, it, there's a pretty nifty trick to get disc back uh, on the spot or inside the case, actually, um, without opening the game. You can find it on YouTube. I've been doing it for some games as well. You have to rattle the the box and then put it on a flat surface and you can click on a particular spot and the disc will snap back where it belongs. You know, I've 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 Googled this exact same problem and I've watched probably about three or four different videos on it and I got good at it for a minute and then I lost the knack. I just can't ah. do it. So but I'm gonna I'm gonna be opening this one. And I'm gonna be playing it. It was um G Darius H D. It's a Ooh, shoot, nice. shoot 'em up. Nice. So I yeah, like 15, 15 bucks. You can't go wrong. So, uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna be opening, I'm gonna be opening up that, that one a little later. My little trick to practicing that is practice on a loose game and put the disc in loose and try and, sorry, an open game and try and put it back in because you can then open it and keep trying. And eventually you'll work out how to do it and then you can yeah. practice with your sealed games. I, I'm just impatient, you know, and, uh, <laughs> I like to complain, so I'll, I'll call him up and I'll complain and uh, hopefully get some credit out of him or something. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, the, 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 but the, the seal was ripped and I don't know. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not a, a super expensive game. They're going to leave on the shelf and just, you know, cherish forever. Yeah. It's, you know, it's sealed glory, but uh, still it's the, uh, it's, it's, it's the principle of the matter anyway. It is what it is. Derek, tell us a bit about yourself. Where are you from? Uh, what do you like to collect? Tell us about your collection. Yes, I'm 37 years old and I'm from the Netherlands. And I've been collecting pretty much hardcore PlayStation for almost a decade. Um, but of, yeah, before I started collecting hardcore, I already had uh, almost childhood games. Uh, we never sold them, fortunately. So when I started collecting, I already had a pretty nice collection of PlayStation 1 games, PlayStation 2 games, PS3 even, uh, NES, Super Nintendo, GameCube. Um, I basically come from a sort of collector kind of family. Uh, my mom is a huge Beatle and Paul McCartney fan. She has uh, glass cabinets in her house with all sorts of Beatle trinkets and things. My dad has a huge music collection and also glass cabinets with old toys. So I think 
it's in my DNA to collect all sorts of things. Um, when I was little, I collected things like stickers and pog caps and I collected vinyl for a bit as well. And eventually I transitioned to games because, yeah, that's where my heart lies. Um, and then specifically PlayStation because I found out after a while that PlayStation is really where the heart is for me. Uh, I don't really care about Xbox or Sega. A little bit about Nintendo as well. I have a small part of Nintendo collection, but yeah, it's pretty much PlayStation all the way. And I'm not really sticking to a particular uh, PlayStation console. Um, yeah, I flip-flop a bit between all different consoles and cool games and genres and thingies. Um, I try to collect some little subsets. Um, yeah, but I flip-flop a bit because I don't want to get stuck at super expensive games or anything. And then I move to the next thing and then I might back move back again. And, so I keep things moving a bit. It also depends a bit on what you come across. <clears throat> I was going to add that. Um, it gives you freedom of yeah. um, picking and choosing the good deals because you're not after one particular title. You're after Exactly. Certain. Ten years you've been at it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I started. Dude. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, it, it's 2013 when I really kicked things into gear. And it was pretty much because a friend of mine started going to flea markets and he brought home boxes upon boxes of games and every single week and i thought like whoa <laughs> i'm missing out here i have to do that as well i want to fill some gaps in my collection as well and uh, you know you can buy all those games that you couldn't afford back in the day for like five bucks or so so i tried to get into collecting as well and also i discovered game chasers that were doing pretty much the same and then i had a dutch collector called dr retro that was doing pretty much the same as well so i thought like how oh, you there's an entire market out here that i can you know collect some really cool stuff and that's when i started to buy things i already was buying games but mostly as a gamer so i bought already i bought collector's editions and cool things and steelbooks and everything but it was mostly like i want to play this game there's a steelbook edition i'm going to buy that uh, around 2013 i was also going back to previous platforms like playstation 1 playstation 2 and starting to fill the voids in my collection you said uh you, you mentioned two youtubers the uh the game chasers yeah i have no idea how i found them on youtube but around i think it was about 2011 2012 ish i've discovered them and I, I still watch them because yeah they're just lovely i love that show yeah those guys are nuts i i, I enjoy yeah. them very much they're they're out of texas i believe yeah. yeah yeah they go around free markets uh at texas first and now pretty much the entire usa and yeah they, they hunt for games and they have all sorts of shenanigans and stuff yeah it's great <clears throat> yeah, they're, supposed, they're supposed to be putting out a movie soon uh yeah i don't know yeah I don't, is that thing ever dropped i, I i've kind of fallen um, off on those guys have they released it yet yes they have released it um they also i think they broadcasted it in some cinemas in the usa and they are working on a blu-ray version or so i think yeah i've uh i i i i, I don't know i i like i said i used to watch them religiously but then they uh. <laughs> Then they they sort of fell off on their own, you know. They started getting, then they got that drunk guy to Dongo. It's just a oh, whole yeah. thing. Over there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, good game changers. What was the other? What was the other YouTuber you mentioned? Um, yeah, yeah Doctor Retro. He was, uh, well, he is a Dutch YouTuber and also a collector. And he was pretty famous uh, back around 2010 to 2012, I'd say. Uh, he was basically um, the go-to guy, I think. He had a lot of knowledge about games and playstation collecting and everything and he went to flea markets he, he was a flipper he, he has a massive collection and he still has he doesn't collect uh new things i think i think he's somewhat out of the collection but still kept his old stuff but he also used to go to flea markets and he brought home so many awesome things absolutely ridiculous <clears throat> yeah, i used to watch a lot of dr retro and he would have been like um, when i first started collecting like the metal jesus of yes today, exactly yeah there wasn't anyone else out there doing that type of content on youtube you ever hear of this uh, YouTuber called uh, uh, Figsy? You ever hear that Figsy? guy? Mm, yeah. I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> you can't pronounce the he's, game he's, right, that he's, guy. He's the Xbox collector, isn't he? <laughs> the, the, the Xbox guy, Figsy. <laughs> Sometimes he brings home books, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I, I, I just, just kidding, Figsy. Oh, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring that Bible meme out some at some point, so you're gonna see that. Oh, you should. That was that was actually one of the funniest <laughs> ones I've ever seen. I need to um, upload that. No, we'll we'll get into the memes later. So, uh, let me ask you, Dirk, how big 
how big is your collection? Pretty, pretty um, big. I'm. I have about thirty six hundred games. Thirty six places. Yeah, and the largest part is actually the PlayStation Four collection with about thirteen hundred games, <laughs> which is a bit excessive, but all right. Um, and then I have about six hundred PS Two games, six hundred PS Three games, about four hundred PS One games, I think, and then uh, yeah, hundred plus PS games and Vita games as well and then some Nintendo but the main use, part is yes, PlayStation I use the Game Eye app to track my collection do you use an app or what do you, what do you, yeah, do you track I, your shit? I use a spreadsheet Microsoft Excel because it gives me a bit of freedom to add comments to things um, I use an app for my vinyl which is Discogs but you're stuck to pretty much what it's in the database and Right now, I have the freedom. For example, if if I buy a game, the manual is missing. I can add a note saying manual is missing, or box is shattered, or game is German, or Indian exclusive, or something like that. So it gives me better freedom, and it works because I can put the spreadsheet on my phone and bring it on the go. Well, Derek, cool. I did the exact same thing with Google Sheets. Yeah. Um, the one reason that I then can put it on my computer as well and bounce it between my computer and phone. But if you've, um, I don't know if, how to get excel on my phone I'm using yeah I, phone. I think i'm I've, I've uploaded the excel sheet as a google docs file so i can bring it on the go and think yeah, I'm so doing the same, same way same yeah way I do it. and yeah I, I, we've got about the same amount of games too so yeah at that point it just seems to work right yeah and it becomes a necessity because uh, you know 99 percent of the games by your head but every now and then you think oh my do i have that one or <laughs> not and do i have it with a manual or not so it's, well, it's nice when you can check game. it. It's the variants that I don't remember. Yeah. It's like, I've got this game, but do I have that variant or do I am I missing this variant? And it's things like that. True. Yeah, yeah every now and then I'm missing like a PlayStation 2 game. It's a random game and I think I have seen this one like a hundred times, but do I actually own it or not? I cannot remember. <laughs> you know, I I, uh, I mean, for you guys, I mean, Pigsy, you, know, you got you got your computer, you got your battle station there. I get it. I don't know what kind of setup you got at home, Dirk, but uh, me, ninety nine percent of the shit I do is on my phone. The only time I ever get on my laptop or my computer is just is to do this thing. So it it, it just doesn't make sense for me to go uh, get a spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, if you get if well, you're you're already so deep in your spreadsheet. But uh, to anybody out there you know, listening, I highly suggest um, Game Eye because it's uh it's simple. Uh, it it links directly to uh, eBay. It links directly to price charting and uh, some other some other sites. And uh, you can also make notes. And but it's not so good with um, it's not so good with regions though. That's the only drawback because sometimes it doesn't differentiate between a PAL and an NTSC game. But you can always uh, you know uh, offer up your own uh, input and hopefully uh, they they off they they fix it on their end. But uh, yeah, I know. I don't. Thirty six hundred games, though. I, I think you would need a, something a little more, uh, a little more in depth. Because uh, oh, well, that's uh, interesting you say that. Um, and I'm sure Derek's gonna have the exact same experience as me here. When I first started wanting to catalog my games, I actually started using some of these apps. Um, but back in 2015, 2014, 2016, these apps weren't very updated like i was finding 70 percent of the barcodes i was scanning weren't on them and i was actually manually yeah. adding them all myself so it got to a point where i'm like i'm doing more work than is needed here i'm just like scrap this i'll just do it myself today it's actually amazing like i can go and scan every barcode they're all going to be in the system because there's so many collectors out there doing it but when we started it wasn't and you can't just put four thousand games in an app it would take literally like a year <laughs> Is that game I app like a user community where you can add your own games and then have them approved, or how does it work? Well, oh, it, I, it, it, it's an app. It's on the uh, it's on the Android App Store, and uh, it's, it's uh, they have their own they, their own database. And anytime, uh, in, if you if you find something and you, it's not showing up in the app, or if, if it's mislabeled as PAL, you sign you sign in, and you can just um, you can add you you can add your own notes and. Uh, Hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll take your advice and they and you can op upload images of the game and whatnot. And it's been a minute since I've added something, but they get better every day. And uh, I, I highly recommend them if you want some on your phone. You can also you can also just scan the games with your phone. I never do. Uh, like Fixie said, I, I enjoy it's part of it's part of the pleasure for me to 
sit there and you know put in the notes and put <laughs> in the because you could you label it complete, sealed, missing, and you put whatever notes you want. But uh, yeah, uh, game eye, I highly recommend it. Yeah, sounds for those good. Of you, for those of you guys who are in front of your computers, <coughs> excuse me. Excuse you me. know what they're going to incorporate? Uh, import from Excel button. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was awesome. so if any developers are watching, import from Excel and you'll get a couple of customers. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few apps you can pay for, but uh, no, I'm just I'm too cheap to do that. Is Game Mike completely free? Yeah, 100 percent free. Oh, really? oh wow! Well. Mm. Check it out. I, I, I'm 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 eyeballing the PlayStation Classic over your shoulder there. I always <laughs> want I always wanted to get one. Is that one sealed? It's actually a banner. It's a cardboard oh. standy. It's not the console itself, but I do have the console, and I think it's sealed. <laughs> um, I originally I... pre-ordered that one, and then the backlash was so big that I wanted to cancel it. But by the time I wanted to cancel it, it wasn't possible to cancel it anymore because they already shared it out to me. Because pretty much everyone was canceling it, and they were stuck with a big pile of uh, PlayStation classics. <laughs> but uh, I returned it anyway, and a couple of months later, it was I think it paid like forty bucks or so, or thirty bucks or so for one. And originally, the price was about one hundred to one hundred twenty euros or so. So uh, yeah, for th for thirty bucks, it's it's nice for the collection. Oh man, I I I missed out with they were on they were they were blowing them out in a local yeah. store. For like cheap, cheap. I wish I'd bought one then because now you can mod them right now. Oh, you, oh, hell yeah! You can. It's so so easily moddable. I mean, that's that's the main reason to have it. You know, you just stick a what's a what do they call it? You yeah, did uh, USB, USB, yeah, USB stick. Just stick it in there. And there's a company out in uh, somewhere in Asia that makes them, and they call them crack and like heroin and uh <laughs> cocaine i'm not kidding you it's, it's crazy you, you buy you buy the crack one and it's got you know an extra 100 games not all the games but uh nice yeah, i want one but yeah we'll see yeah. we'll see if santa brings one on the tree for me are they still as cheap as they were or when did they go up the price oh they're gonna they're about 80 bucks now i think Woo. well i didn't know yeah. that yeah so yeah let's sit on yours it's uh it's going up in price Uh, Derek, you were telling us that you like to collect certain subsets. Um, I know yeah. one in particular that you've recently completed, which is really impressive, the PlayStation 1 double pack set or the double case set. Um, tell us about that and other subsets yeah. that you've completed. Um, I completed it thanks to you, so <laughs> massive thanks again. Um, it's actually the Paul uh, PlayStation subset uh, with the games in double cases like like these and this is actually a game that you helped me get uh, this one is final fantasy 6 and this is the double uh case and it's only released in australia and i had yeah i couldn't find any so i contacted you and you were kind enough to help me out um but i do not have all the ntc ones because that's another cookie but uh i'm fine with the paul ones it cost me oh quite some years at a certain point in time, I, I needed a Castlevania Symphony of the Night limited edition, but that game is super hard to find and it's ridiculously expensive. And I was gambling on finding it at a flea market uh, one day for a couple of bucks and that obviously never happened. But the game only went up in price and up in price and up in price. So yeah, that was pretty much the deal break for me. And when I got that cork out of the bottle, um, yeah, I got to rest within a couple of weeks or months. So, um, Actually, another hard one that I had to find is this one. <clears throat> this one is, I think this is even more rare than Final Fantasy VI. This is Final Fantasy Anthology, which comes with Final Fantasy IV and Final Fantasy V. And once again, this is the Australian exclusive one that comes in a double case, because in Europe, this one comes in a standard uh, PlayStation case. Um, yeah, I actually found this, an Australian collector posted this through Instagram. I had no idea that this game was available even, so... I just yeah. double checked. I'm like, I got it. <laughs> yeah, you have it, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you bought the Final Fantasy lot. That thing was included in that one. So funny you yeah. say that. Like, I, I was individually buying all the Final Fantasy games, um, and I had five of them, and I paid eBay prices for five of them. And then all six of them popped up a lot, complete for $150. Like, someone must have been selling something that they found and just didn't really have an idea of what it was. It just said Final Fantasy PS1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that, that Final Fantasy anthology variant is about uh, 150 on its own, so that's a steal. 
Are uh, are uh, European PAL cases the same as uh, Australian um, PAL cases? Because I know we are, yes. ours are. Yeah, well, sort of. The the standard PAL case like this, it's uh, a little bit thicker than a CD case. And then in Australia, they have another variant, and they have a standard CD case. It's a smaller case, but but not every game in Australia comes in a case like that. I I don't know exactly what's the reasoning. Yeah, I'm not, I get the this. reasoning behind it is there's absolutely no consistency with anything the public just do. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> if you look like comparing the PS3, the PS2, even the PS4, there's no consistency of anything they do. But I would say like two, three, maybe even like 400 of their games came in these small cases. Yeah. But then you don't go for a full set because not all of them did. There's plenty of Australian games that came in the big case. So it's personally i actually try and get the bigger case if i can um if i come across like both of them i'll sell this one and keep the bigger case yeah here in america we uh when they originally originally dropped they had um they had they had cardboard boxes originally i believe and then they had like uh like the big like like the sega cd ones you know you're, you're uh, the long box yeah. yeah and then and then after that it was all just uh like cds and uh, yeah. it was, it's convenient for me or for PS1 Collectors in America because, you know, if you, you got a crack case or yeah. you can just grab an any old CD case and swap yeah, it we're, out. But, we're stuck with these ones. You cannot replace them that easily because the, those boxes are really hard to find. Although I found some Reaper ones where they're missing the PlayStation logo, so they're not uh, 100% official, but it's better than having a completely mashed up case. Where, so, wait, wait. The PlayStation logo is on the, on the plastic? Yes. Yeah. Um, I can show you on a couple of spots actually. Wait, I think that was the box protector. Come on. Um, let's see. Here on the wait, there on the gray area, the PlayStation oh, okay. letters are, and, and uh, as well on the sides, both the bottom and the top, uh, there's also the PlayStation logo there. Look at that. Um, yeah, so obviously, rental of uh, not rental case, but repro cases don't have that. And there's also this hologram sticker, and um, that's also missing. On uh, this is uh, glued on the plastic. So, once you replace this, you can buy a replacement for the plastic, but it's missing this one, this one, and this one. So, it doesn't look at, as nice, but still, <clears throat> yeah, they, they, they usually just slap the hologram stickers on uh, yeah. sports, sports games, or <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. So they all, 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 all your game, all PS One games have hologram stickers. Yes. Just, yeah. Man, yeah. Jesus. They came that way because that's pretty much the, the mark to say that it's a legit game and uh, not a, a copy or something like that. I personally think the PAL PS One games just look so nice. The attention to details, like they, they might be fragile, but when they're in perfect condition, they look beautiful. I do like them, and they stand out from CDs. So it's it's yeah, it's nice. You can see them when. When you have the flea market and you see a stack of PS1 games, you can see it from a couple of meters away because they stand out from the rest. Sounds like a then, pain in the ass to me. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah then, it's just simple uh, over here. Well, yeah, just a CD case. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I there was there was a there was a moment um, where I just sat down and decided uh, whether I was going to start collecting ps1 or ps2 games when i first started to, when i was like you know i'm gonna take this shit seriously because i i came across a, I, I got a lot of games and you know there's some ps1 and there's some ps2 and i was like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna go for this i started watching a whole bunch of youtube i went down a rabbit hole and i was like you know what i'm gonna be a fucking video game collector let's go and um thank god i chose ps2 it was it was just the right time right before they started all going nuts but uh yeah i don't know if uh if I had to face down those cases in in Pal Land, I, I don't think yeah that would have been a no brainer. <laughs> but uh, I'm just talking. I'm talking here. But anyway, tell me, uh, Dirk. Um, you say you, you the majority of your collection is PS Four, uh, correct? Yes. How do you choose a game? What what makes you chase a game? That is pretty complicated because. <laughs> 
uh, yeah, it's it's almost inexplainable, but it it has to have a certain something. But what that certain something is is hard to determine. It can be uh, if it's a game from my favorite series or any game series that I enjoy, I will obviously pick it up. Like when a new Yakuza comes out, I will pick up a new Yakuza. Final Fantasy, I always buy those the uh, Sony exclusive games. Yes, and also I really like shoot 'em ups, uh, RPGs, racing games. So those are the games that I tend to buy because I want to play them as a gamer. Um, yeah, shoot them up. Obviously, are nice as a collector yeah. as well because they tend to go up as well. Um, and then, yeah, you have certain uh, publishers that I always that I'm always after. Uh, for example, here you have well, you have limited run. Obviously, I don't have a complete set of limited run, but I have quite a lot. But for, you also have a couple of other companies like Red Art Games in uh, in France and Strictly Limited in Germany. I have a full set for PS4 of every single release that they put out and they put out some oh, really nice games like shoot em ups and, and and those kind of games. They are really good games. Wait wait a minute, strictly limited? That's a that's a German yes. company? Yes. Yeah. Holy shit. I also okay. have this one, Fixie. <laughs> I've got that one. Yeah, nice, huh? <laughs> it's no, uh, good for my epic. Fifteen releases and then I stopped. Well you bought this one and then you stopped? No, I bought the first fifteen. I oh okay, okay. Under 15. Um, how many are they up to now? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. I think I think they must have put about 50 out already. So when I first started collecting them, I thought, you know, I'm not going to get all the limited run games. I'm going to get all these games. There might be yeah. 20 of them. They're not, they're not going to put out like 100 or anything crazy. I'll get them all. And then they started putting out like two a month. And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, the original goal was to put out one game a month. So that's somewhat doable because it's about 12 games a year yeah. but yeah well i think they sort of stick to it it might be a little bit over that but they don't put out two games a week or something like limited run but the the strictly limited run they remind me a bit of five or five game street on the playstation 2 because they put out all sorts of really niche and cool japanese games here in europe and lots of shooters like uh, cotton uh g, g darius as well G darius Darius Collection, uh, Vasara, uh, this Gryphonite Epic. So really nice games. Do they do Gradius as well? Um, I don't think so. I think Gradius uh, It's the one that... Uh, no, that's G Darius. Did they do Gradius? I don't think they did. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, though. Publisher but is, was. is there even a Gradius on the PS4? No, on PS2. Oh, oh on PS2. Uh, no, that one cool. wasn't Game Five Five Game Street. That was published by Konami or so, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Dirk, uh, damn it! I was going to ask you something. I just forgot. Oh yeah, do you uh, do you do you mess with NTSC PS4 yeah. games? Do, yeah, yeah okay. for for since the PS3 era, really, because uh, yeah, the, the console is region free, so uh, why not? If there's a cool game over there, why not? I want that. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> it, it it takes a special game for me to cross the street to to get a pal game. <laughs> no, I don't really mind as long as I can play it. I, I'm not buying strictly <laughs> Japanese games if I can't play them because yeah. that's there's no point really. I need to be able to play it one day. Not to well, say that I open don't have PS one or two games from Japan or North America in your collection. No, yeah, I have a few from Japan. Um, I, yeah, I have Chrono Cross because I wanted that one so desperately, so I have that one. And that's my only American game that I have. I got a question for you. Have you considered getting rid of it now? It's available on the Switch. Mm, I, no, because I don't have a Switch. Ah. <laughs> so I'm still waiting for the physical release for the PS5 or PS4, but it's not coming. I don't think that it will happen, which is strange, actually, because why wouldn't they put it out? Yeah, I know, right? Like, it's, there's a lot of money to be made, and Square, Square Enix seem to yeah. milk every, every dollar they can get. But the decisions are really rare, really strange every now and then because they put out Final Fantasy VIII Remastered here in Europe, but not in America on the disc. And, and then it's sort of Cross. It's Sorry? really sought after. It's really sought after. It's like fifty dollars or it is. Oh, I had no idea. It's. I think it's really cheap actually here in Europe. Well, it might have gone up, but it was always below twenty bucks last time I checked. It, it was very hard for me to get. One of my friends actually oh, really? bought it. Oh well. Hmm. They knew I was looking for it, and I couldn't find oh, it wow. under forty dollars for a long time. Oh well, Dirk, uh, do you uh, are you getting into the PS Five at all? Yes, I do have a PS Five, and I am also actively buying games. And yeah, definitely. Also, Red Art Games, 
limited run games, strictly limited games on trying to keep up with the nice things, so to say. Yeah, as long as it, uh, as I managed to keep up. I, my goal for the PS4 was to buy all the rare and elusive and low print games and cool things. And I managed to do pretty well. I have uh, like Godzilla, Berserk, Band of the Hawk, uh, both Attack of Titans, uh, well, full set for these ones, uh, the uh, rim, limited run games, the first couple of 30 games or so. You know? And then I missed out on Poop Slinger and Tamashi. So, yeah. <laughs> Poopsing, poop slinger, god damn it. Sucks. <laughs> but that sucks because you're pretty deep into the PS4. You wasted a lot of you, you and I haven't wasted, but you spend a lot of money you're trying to keep up and then you miss one game and that's the number one game that everyone wants. And yeah, <laughs> basically everything tumbles down. <laughs> See, I, I got to Mishi, but I miss poop slinger. So for me, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna sell this and buy games that I want because it's not True. worth the money to True. me. Hey, uh, Derek, you... we haven't um, touched on the handhelds. Do you collect the Vita or PSP? Yeah, both. But I have to say, I vastly prefer a console over a handheld. So I do have a Vita and I do have a PSP, but yeah, they're not my go-to systems. Uh, although I have a, do a decently sized collection. Uh, I think especially Vita. I also have some limited run games that are pretty rare for the Vita. And uh, yeah, once again, strictly limited red art games, uh, the ones from V Blank Entertainment. So don't those kind of things. Um, Is, <clears throat> yes. Oh, uh, do you have a do you have a dedicated room uh, just for your video games? No, sadly not. That's my big dream right now. Most of it is sadly in boxes. But uh, yeah, oh, man. <laughs> well, you have to have some future goals, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I heard that. Man. Most people have a house first, and then they start collecting. And I start collecting and try to get the house around it. <laughs> shit, yeah. I'm gonna need three bedrooms, one for me, one for yeah. and one for my all my shit. <laughs> Funny you say that when I was looking for a house, I was looking for one with a game room set up in mind. <laughs> yeah, that was the, the real estate. What are you after? Somewhere I can put all my yeah, video games. That's that's what I'm doing right now. But yeah, the Netherlands is hard to buy a house right now because they are expensive to sell. <laughs> but one day, one day. Yeah, well, my yeah, my game room's in my living room. Uh, I, I'm I'm in my bedroom. This is where me and my girlfriend sleep, and the magic. It, well, it, it's happened before. I promise. We have a kid, <laughs> but uh, no, no video games in here. Uh, everything's downstairs. Uh, I don't get. Uh, but uh, are are you in your bedroom? Because you, you, you're no, so. I'm a, yeah, I've I've built a pretty nice backdrop actually, but I'm on uh, on the top room of the house because it's. Yeah, there you go. Relax it right here. I recognize that top shelf, the Holy Grail shelf. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I have my Prescott shelf here and Little Big Planet shelf. Because oh yeah, when we talked about the subsets, I also collect Little Big Planet things. I haven't mentioned that, but for some reason, I really like Little Big Planet, especially the art style. And Sackboy is just the cutest character ever. So um, yeah, whenever I have a chance to get something Little Big Planet or Sackboy related, I will jump on it immediately. It's also top priority for me, so I need those things, and I have a pretty nice collection, actually. Nice, cool things. <clears throat> did did, did, did PS Five drop anything? Little Big Planet? Uh, yeah, Sackboy. The Sackboy, a big adventure. But it's yeah, released on both PS Four and Five. So, what? sorry, it was a launch title, wasn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. I was so happy when he announced that one. <laughs> if something's uh, if something's PS Four and PS Five, which one do you go for first? Um. I think right now, if I want to play the game, I'm definitely going for PS5 because the experience might be a little bit better. Um, collecting related, it depends because if it's a strictly limited or red art game, then I have to consider. Uh, I think I will go for the PS4 one because I have to set complete and otherwise I'm missing one. Or I will buy both, but depends a bit on the price. If they're cheap, I might get both. Uh, I, I'm fully totally um, committed for that PS4, even with the games, because the, every game has the free upgrade. You just have to let it yeah. download for an extra couple of hours. So, um, a couple of hours? I'm, what? Well, I'm in Australia. Our internet speeds are up. That dial-up. No, because I was going to say, because I was talking, who was it? It was... Um... I was talking to I was talking to James. Yeah, uh, PS4 games seem to be more expensive than PS5. Their PS5 counterparts, well, physical anyway, and I get, it just makes sense because you got one game, 
you can play it on two systems and oh, versus, cool. you got one game you can only play it on one but uh i don't know um if the ps5 if it's in my future uh hopefully uh i'll see it sometime next year and uh but it's going to be a ps4 pro you know point you know 2.0 for me but because uh yeah i don't know i don't i just i just don't find the ps5 games attractive they just visually uh, that that white border just oh yeah you get you get used to that soon soon enough but, <laughs> you used to. <laughs> uh, i really like the ps5 controller is really nice but in terms of games then i think returnal is a must play but that's pretty much it i think the rest of the games that are also on ps4 like god of War ragnarok uh, sackboy um Grand Turismo, Horizon, so you can all get them on PS4 as well. Maybe so Demon basically, Souls. the only two ones, yeah, yeah, Demon right. Souls and uh, Ratchet and Clank and Returnal are about the only ones that are only released on PS5, I think, for now. So yeah, you're not really missing that much, well, at the moment. I heard that. Uh, my girlfriend uh, chimed in. Uh, what do you mean there are no p- video games in our bedroom? Yes, uh, <laughs> they're all. She, she, she. she, she she does digital uh, <laughs> and i collect physical and it's 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 a constant battle between us it's a i'm not going to air out my dirty laundry on the on a public forum <laughs> but, not here uh, because we'll all be on your side it wouldn't be fair <laughs> <laughs> no but uh yeah I, I, I try and get her physical games when i can honey i love you she's watching she's playing video she plays video games downstairs and watches on an ipad or not the ipad but you know what what she watches on a tablet anyway anyhow i gotta I, sometimes she doesn't listen though so let's let's, let's hope she's not listening now oh, damn it she <laughs> might booted off the internet in a couple <laughs> <of minutes. laughs> hi derek you're saying your um collections all the way but um you do share your collection over on instagram um tell us yeah. about the instagram your uh, page name and um, what you do over there yeah um i can be found on a sir underscore collect a lot so sir collect a little with an underscore and yeah i try to share my collection with the world through instagram um it's convenient for me because yeah first i always thought when i seen the game chasers and dr retro i thought maybe i want to start a, a youtube channel one day but yeah it's a lot of work to get all those videos edited and recorded and everything and instagram pictures are a bit faster to do so uh, i'll stick to that i started last year in august i think and uh, I have been liking it really well so far, so I will stick to that for for the future. <clears throat> so it's Sir underscore Collect a lot. Yes, Collect a lot. Yes, exactly. All right, okay. Because thought it would be a fitting name. <laughs> yeah, I've well, got the link in the description if anyone wants to check it out, guys. Thanks. And yeah, what I basically you... post is uh, yeah, video game related stuff, and also some records in between, but mostly video game related stuff, and especially PlayStation, obviously. Figsy, Figsy sent me the link and he put uh, Sir underscore collector a lot. Ooh. So I, 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 no, I was like, what can I find this guy? Where the hell is this guy? <laughs> He's a fraud. <laughs> Fucking Figsy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, you're going to have to pardon me. I got to, I got to, I'll be right back. I've been following your Instagram, I think, from um, pretty much when you made it. Um, but I just scrolled through yesterday prior to you coming on the show and it just absolutely blew me out some of the games that you've got in your collection like um like i've got a nice collection but some seeing some of the games was it was actually really amazing um especially like some of your ps2 holy grails that was um yeah i'm also was... really proud of my collection but then then again if you look at your collection i'm envious of that as well so <laughs> you have to have something to look forward to um I have to say my collection is pretty surreal. When I started out 10 years ago, uh, I wasn't expecting to have all these games. I mean, if you would have told me that I had, would have had all those PlayStation 2 uh, shoot 'em ups uh, things like Chocobo Racing, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, uh, yeah, Tombi 1, Tombi 2, no, <laughs> I would have thought, yeah, sure. <laughs> when I started out, I had this wish list of about 10 games uh, and I was always hoping when I went to a flea market that I would find one of those and those games were uh, Castlevania, Chocobo Racing, Tommy 1, Tommy 2, uh, Azure Dreams, Lumax, Misadventures of Tronbon and then Final Fantasy and it's also over 10 games right but whatever. Um, what else? Rapid Reload and I think I, I managed to find pretty much all of them except for Misadventures of Trombone and 
repertoire load. Those are still on my wanted list, but those games have been going up in price over the last decade. So, yeah, I don't think I will find those at the flea market for two bucks a piece, <laughs> but you never know. <clears throat> it's it's I, actually really cool. We've got such a similar taste because I had, when I wanted to focus on the PS1, I had four Holy Grails, Castlevania, Chocobo Racing, and then the two Sudoku games. Oh, yeah. Uh, I need those as well. I have, yeah. But uh, there's a remake in the making, so I will buy the remake instead instead of paying 250 bucks a piece for those. <clears throat> well, I'm over here hopeful that the remake will get people to sell their copies <laughs> yeah. the market and the price will go down. <laughs> That's actually a good idea. I would try that as well. See if it can work to that. What is actually your best free market find, Pixie? Flea market? So we don't have flea yeah. markets over here. Okay. So, uh, a garage sale then, maybe? Garage sale find... I'll think about that, and um, we'll chat about okay. something else because it, it's okay. I will show you mine. It's hard to answer that because it's pretty surreal. It's by far my best find. It's Tombi Two, and the cover was missing, so the cover is a repro, but it comes with the manual and with the back cover and the disc, obviously. And I paid thirty cents for this game, and I couldn't believe when I found that. <laughs> that that just makes your entire day, <laughs> regardless of what happens, pretty much. That that is, and it's it's one of those games that I, I don't even think I've seen that in person in my entire life. So it's it's cool. Um, like I can think of some games recently, but then because I've been doing this for so long, like I remember finding at the same time going around the bloke's house locally and picking up Godzilla and Persona oh, wow. Arena on PS3 for ten bucks. And at the time, I was, I think I negotiated the price because it was $10 each and I got them both for $10. And like, you know, they weren't expensive at the time, but today it's like a $300 game and the other one's $100. Um, but then, like, I had to pick up this year with all three Project Zero games um, for $80, all complete. I remember leaving this guy's house and, like, I was legitimately, like, shaking. Yeah. Recording a video trying to show people my pickup and, like, the whole video is just shoot and me shaking. But, um, because yeah, I've been doing it for so long, it's it's hard to individually pick one. I sort of have to really, really think about that answer, go over the collection and realise, oh, actually, I've got this game that's, like, $500 for 10 bucks at the garage sale. What about you, Will? What's your biggest... Uh, best ever wild pickup garage sale or flea, flea market or etc oh man i can't remember i think it was that naked dude uh i got a bunch of uh, sweet then games from him for real cheap yeah, real uh, cheap naked dude <laughs> well, I, I've, I've told I've, I've told the story before i went i went to the guy's house uh, he, he was uh, advertising and uh he um he had a bunch of this ps2 they had a bunch of the Suikoden games on PS2, and uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, my my five year old just walked in the room, and she's telling me about her loose tooth that she just yanked out. Oh, good job, sweetheart. Well, she's got her tooth out, but anyway, <laughs> all right. But anyways, uh, I walk, I, I go go to the guy's house. He shows up at the door, and all he's wearing is a robe, and that, that's it. And uh, yeah, I saw some things. But it was worth it for the price I paid for the for like uh, I think it was like three three different Suikoden games, and it was like five bucks a pop. I sold all my games, all my PS2 games, right. I'd say probably about six uh, six months to a year before COVID, and then I saw everything uh, PS2 just fly through the roof, and I was like, uh. But you know, uh, I got I got fair prices for them uh, at the time. But yeah, Suikoden games, naked old man balls. That's the story. <laughs> It is what it is. <laughs> it's one of those trade-offs. <laughs> no, and uh, I did one time find uh, I found Godzilla PS4 in uh, a GameStop for it was like I think it was nineteen bucks. Nice. Yeah, but I turned around. Yeah. Oh, thank. You. <laughs> I turned around and I traded it for um, PS2 copy of Silent Hill. What's the, the was it forbidden memories? No, not forbidden memories. Uh, shattered yeah. memories. Shattered Maybe? memories. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I traded it for uh, Silent Hill shattered memories and uh, about three or four other uh, just yeah you know, filler games. But not uh, bad because that Godzilla game isn't any good. 
it's it's yeah, rare. It's, it's, it's terrible. terrible. I bought it as well because it was on discount. I, I think I paid thirty bucks or so retail, and I actually platinumed the game. But man, <laughs> that's a massive grind. You have to play for about a hundred hours doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, and it drives you nuts. And yeah. <laughs> and the, I, the weirdest thing is that the platinum trophy isn't even that rare because you would think that nobody in this world would actually go for platinum, but there's actually a surprising amount of people that actually managed to platinum that game. I, 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 I up would be so little people actually played it in the first place. I played it so popular that because of yeah. that. <laughs> I played the game. I think I got one trophy on it, and uh, but that's. It's it's it, you're it is it's boring. It's just, uh, yeah. but I I like Godzilla. They, they they need they need to put out a new Godzilla game. Yeah, true. I'm, I'm a fan of Godzilla, but and then everyone will buy it and it won't be rare. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, you know. Usually the shitty the shitty games are the are the rarest. And I got my fair share of shitty games, but nobody cares. Nobody cares uh, whether they're rare or not, and that's also it's also a weird thing. Some of the rarest games are just worthless, but uh, well, not worthless, but uh, you know what I'm saying. They're like five dollar, ten dollar games, but they're rare as hell until somebody makes a stink about it and yeah. raises, the, raises the price through the roof. Well, start your stink. Yeah. <laughs> price. Well, what games? <laughs> well, we spoke about one on Friday. Uh, the Sports champion medieval move. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's one of the rarest PS3 games out there, but a copy is going to pop up for ten dollars, and it mightn't sell for six months. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, you know, it's just it's a rare game, but yeah, nobody cares. Yeah, and uh, and you know, you PS, you know, the collector, the collector will care, and they'll chase it and they'll pay for it, but it doesn't. The uh, the market doesn't recognize the price, which is it's weird. It's weird how that works. You think. You'd think rare would automatically equal expensive, but it doesn't. Yeah, it's, it's gotta it's gotta be rare, and it's gotta be uh, it's gotta be wanted. And if it's just rare and nobody cares about it, yeah, nobody's gonna pay for it. it There's a game on PlayStation Three. It's called Fnatica or Fnatica, and I've been well. The game is not that expensive, but I mean, I wanted a UK copy, and it was so hard to find. I had to search for months till I found a copy and. You would expect. I ex honestly expected that game to be super rare and, and valuable in the future, but I think it's still about thirty bucks or so because nobody cares about the game, like you said. I think what you were going to find is, um, and this has already happened with systems like the NES and the SNES, is these rare games aren't going to become expensive until more collectors are going for full sets yeah. and get down to that point where, okay, I only need thirty games. Well, these games are all cheap, but I can't find them. And there's going to be like 30, 40, 50 people out there doing the same thing. Suddenly, these games are going to become expensive. And people will realize, oh, hang on. You know, this Persona game isn't rare. It's just expensive where, you know, Venetica is actually a rare game. And suddenly that becomes, you know, the one to get. But right now, we're not seeing it. And especially, that's especially going to happen for the PS4. And I don't think that's ever going to flip because there's not going to be many full set PS4 collectors out there. The system's too big. Only one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Only one. <laughs> You'll know all the rare games and be like, guys, you're picking up the wrong stuff. But hey, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, you often talk about the uh, the SingStar set and uh, I, in all the different countries. I actually have a full NTSC. Uh, PS2 SingStar set, and the uh, the hardest one to get in that set was uh, SingStar Latino, which mm. I, I I think it's a I think it's a Mexican exclusive. I don't know, but uh, I finally found one. And uh, but yeah, it's still it's still just like a fifteen, sixteen, twenty dollar game. Nobody cares. But uh, yeah, it's just it is what it is, and uh, it's 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 this hobby we're all in. Yeah, cheers to. Here's to being a collector. <laughs> oh, this also this 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 episode also marks my uh, triumphant return to alcohol. It's been three weeks. You're so. <laughs> so um, that's interesting about SingStar because SingStar Latino is cheap on PS3 as well. But um, I think what we found with the SingStar games on PS3, especially the country exclusives, uh, because there wouldn't have been many of them for each country. Like you can't assume 
they're going to make a million copies of each Finnish SingStar game because how many people in Finland are going to have a PS3 and then they're going to buy copies? Uh, so because of this and then so many people importing them, I think we're finding that it is they are becoming rarer games artificially. And because of that, sellers are realising that people are buying these and they're putting their prices up. It's, it's, it happened for the Buzz games. Uh, I know sellers that have no idea what's going on, but they sell these games for a, a lot of money because people buy them quickly. Did you know, fun fact, Figsy was accused today of artificially inflating the price of Buzz games. <laughs> really? You're related to Metal Jesus. I yeah, someone, <laughs> someone called him Metal Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it better. And they had me blocked, so I couldn't reply to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But anyway. Yeah, I love the group. Do you, do you do you mess around with on Facebook, Dirk? Um, I do have a Facebook account, but I rarely use it. Really, really? That's where all the cool collectors are at. I suggest I highly suggest <laughs> checking it out. <laughs> Bigsy's also shying away from uh, Facebook more and more. I I mess with I have Instagram and I mess with it. I'm gonna I'm gonna look you up. I'm gonna follow you. Hope you don't mind. Uh, no, it's, but everyone's uh, no. welcome to follow me. Oh, more the yeah. merrier. D- well, if Figsy would give me the damn right uh, <laughs> yeah. address in the first place, collect, collect. So you check my collect, story. Collect. I'm pretty sure I tagged him in the store, and you're in it as well. <laughs> well, well I, I hope you spelled it right there, <laughs> because it was wrong when you texted it to me. <laughs> there will be this random guy called Sir Collectaton. What was he called? What did you name? <laughs> the, I, I, like, Whoa! All those followers. <laughs> It was like Sir collecting a lot or something yeah. bullshit like that. You fucked up. Anyway. Collect stamps or something. <laughs> <laughs> sir collects stamps a lot. <laughs> anyway, so, Sir underscore collect a lot. There we yes. go. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll check you out later. <laughs> oh, so, so uh, the, um, the Netherlands, what are some of the advantages and then what are some of the disadvantages you find? The advantages, yeah, we have a very small country, uh, but a very densely populated country, but, but we also uh, are quite a rich country. So there's a lot, lots of games, <laughs> obviously. Also lots of people that don't care about their games, so they just sell things off on the cheap. Um, the biggest downside is that there's quite a lot of businessmen, actually, in the Netherlands. So uh, when I started collecting 10 years ago, you would find games at pretty much every flea market. And right now, there's massive competition. There's lots of other collectors, and there's also lots of resellers and people that know their stuff. So it's becoming harder and harder and harder to score good deals. Um, also on sites like Marketplace, yeah, there's a lot, just a lot of competition. If you see a good game and you want to place a bit, man, you get a bit within seconds, basically. So, <clears throat> Dirk, where do you... Yes. Where, yeah. When you're hunt, when you're hunting for games, what are your go-to places? Where do, where do you go? Where do you, where do you go first? Um, yeah, right now, Vinted. I think the Italian collector that was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago Nicola, also at the same yeah, site. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, that's a really nice site because you can buy in pretty much every country in Western Europe, so you're not refined to just the Netherlands. And then uh, there's a site called Marktplatz, which is basically Marketplace, which is basically the Dutch equivalent of Craigslist. Uh, that's a very nice site because it's just the Netherlands only, so you don't have competition from outside. Um, but you have to be quick, like I said, because there's a lot of people there looking for things. And also eBay International. And um, yeah, I buy quite a lot of stuff new. Like Black Friday, I just bought a lot of games because they were cheap. <clears throat> Do you, do you do a lot of hunting in the wild? Because, I mean, you mentioned um, flea markets. and Yeah. If they're, if they're close by, I will go to the flea market uh, or garage sales or anything. Uh, a retrocon. I went to a retrocon in September. That's also really nice. So I want to go there as well uh, next year. Um, but, yeah, flea markets are a bit demotivating. If you keep going there and you never find anything good except for some rotten sport titles or Wii U sports or anything, then, yeah, you just get demotivated. <laughs> You say was it Retrocom? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, a retro convention. So oh, it's retro, like a, yeah. a big uh, retro, uh, yeah, con. Oh, retro, yeah. It's it's we... called in, in Dutch. It's called the Retro Game Beurs, which is a retro uh, yeah, game fair, so to say. Uh, it was a huge ice skating hall, and there nothing but stalls with vendors that were selling games. So yeah, that's pretty much your chance to find rare and elusive stuff that you won't find anywhere else. 
Um, I was looking for a specific game. I was looking for the Mortal Kombat Trilogy double uh, box to complete that set, but uh, I couldn't find it. So maybe someone bought it already or just wasn't there. It'll be there next year. Yeah, I already have it right now, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, what about shops in the Netherlands? Um, yeah, there are some retro shops as well. Uh, there's actually one in a neighboring village. Um, it's a pretty nice one, but they tend to have the same stock every time you go in again. But yeah, it's still cool to see all those old games out there in, in that shop. Um, and there are some dedicated shops online as well. I um, visited Amsterdam back in 2018. I had a great time and predominantly like I was hardcore collecting at that stage. So I made an effort of visiting almost every game shop in Amsterdam, which was like 10 CX stores and then one, yeah. one other shop. But that other yeah. shop was interesting because they had um, a huge selection, but it was all eBay prices. So they had that. So they had all the stock. Uh, it was like an advertising kind of thing. It's cool. Was, was that game, stock? Was it called Game Over or something game like over, that? Maybe Mania mm -hmm. or something. I, I, because I was doing that, and then I'd been to Seattle just before all the names of the shops sort of just merged in my brain. Yeah, we have see. I think um, in the in USA we have you have GameStop. We have Game Mania, which is basically the nationwide uh, game chain. We have one in my city as well. I tend to go there as well because you can find some nice stuff. Um, yeah, but in terms of retro, you have to go to either to something like uh, a, a specific retro store or to uh, like a pawn shop or something like that. They might have retro as well. Uh, but they also notice that retro games are going up in price. So, yeah, they price this stuff accordingly and it's not really worth your while anymore. Yeah, the, the secret is out. Yeah, people know about it. You know, ever since uh, yeah, ever since the boys over there at uh, Wada sold, uh, you know, Mario mm. to themselves, basically <laughs> for a million sold, dollars. Yeah, for a million dollars <laughs> just to set the market. Uh, you know, now you go on Facebook Marketplace and you find some some mom who you know before she read this story on the internet, she would have sold the games for five bucks a piece, but you know. She read this news story about Mario 5000 or whatever the fuck it was selling for a million dollars. And uh, she thinks her fucking NFL 22 is, is worth, you know, you know it's good. Or actually, NFL 12, let's say, is worth uh, at least 100. Come on. It only makes sense. But no. Yeah. It, it's, it's screwed. When people, I, 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 I miss the days when people didn't know what they had. Yeah, you know what I mean, and uh, but no, no, well, it, it's it's the it's the uh, the information age. People, all you, anyone's got to do is go on the internet and they can figure out. Holy shit! But you, you can still find nice things out in the wild or uh, at stores like Game Mania. They don't care if it's a limited edition or a regular copy. They put it on the shelf for the same price, so you can find nice things with a steel book or with a nice slip cover for the regular price. And yeah, you make it like even nice. Oh, it, it's. One of my favorite things is to find a store, you know, slipping. If you catch them slipping, <laughs> no, it's it's it, it makes it, it just makes that pickup so much more sweet. I'll tell you what, especially if it's a franchise, not a local store, because you love yeah. taking money off the big guys. Yeah, Happened to me as well. They had, they had Dragon God Two, which is pretty rare compared to Dragon God One, and they mislabeled it as Dragon God One, so they sold it to me for like four bucks or so. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Very nice. Interesting you say that because today Dragon God One's like over a hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, it used to be a cheap game. Like, it was always ten like years ago. It was super, super common and super worthless. But today, Dragon Guard Two is like one hundred and fifty, where it used to always be at least a hundred. So it hasn't exploded that much. Um, so in terms of rare games, Dragon Guard Two, I reckon, is a rarer game than Dragon Guard One. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've said it before. If uh, video game collectors had a time machine, they wouldn't go back and kill Hitler. <laughs> they would. Uh, they would go shopping for video games in nineteen eighty nine. You know Hell I mean? yes! <laughs> even in even in 2012, I remember walking into stores back then, and we saw like Tombi, which is Tomba in the states, uh, for oh, 80 yeah. bucks. We thought 80 bucks, they're crazy. And right now, that game is over 200. So yeah, let's see it again for 80 bucks. Hell yeah, I'm buying that. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh shit! Oh man! All right. Um, on the PlayStation Collectors podcast, we do like to assign uh, our guests homework. And uh, we, of course, do our homework ourselves. Uh, this week's homework is um, 
show us your one of your favorite uh, steel book. I don't have many steel books in my collection, but uh, I do have a couple I wanted to share. Uh, Figsy, I'm sure, and Dirk, you, both of you guys got plenty of steel books. So, uh, without further ado, uh, this is uh, show us your favorite steel book. So, uh, who wants to go first? I went first I last week, so that's not me. Shall I go first? That's yes, Dirk. Yeah, totally well. fine. Um, this is my favorite one. Is is the glare that bad? Or I can take it out of the box if it's. No, no, it looks good. That yes, looks great. Yeah, this is uh, it's Yakuza, uh, Kiwami, and this is the Japanese. Oh, it's actually Kiwami too. Uh, this is the Japanese exclusive steelbook. It was only available through a Japanese uh, store called Geo Japan or Geo Japan. They do really nice pre-order steelbooks for a lot of games, and yeah, just this one just. This is insane. Okay, I love I the Japanese. Really that is crazy, man. Shit. Yeah. Is I love this the... Rizumi uh, Japanese art style or tattoo style. So, yeah, when I saw this one, I knew I had to have that. One. Is it sealed? The only steel book I've ever no, it's, it's not sealed. They come loose. I can take it out. And that came out about a year before the game came out over here, too, which is interesting. Um, okay. I didn't know that. The inside is, yeah, it, it has the locations of the game. God damn, that's better looking than mine. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but this is by far my favorite. So when Fixie said, pick your favorite steelbook, yeah, the, hands down this one. Nothing comes close to this one for me. And then I, the... I bought an honorable mention as well, uh, also from here, Japan. Uh, it's this one. And this is, uh, yeah. This is Fist of the North Star in America and in Europe. It's also by the same studio from uh, Yakuza. It's actually uh, game over here as well. Where is it? Oh, yeah, this one. It's Fist of the North Star uh, Lost Paradise in the okay. West. And that has a different name here in, uh, in Japan or over there in Japan. But the steelbook looks nice. I like the colors and the design. Nice. The artwork of all those games just look amazing. Yeah. Are 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 those uh are they raised is is it raised up the or is it just flat? Um the Jacuzzi one is just flat. It's a little bit glossy, but it's uh it doesn't have a uh yeah raised and this one doesn't either no nope nope just flat. I was about to, I was about to kick this shadow guy out of the chat, but I think he's, I guess he's a friend of your friend of yours, Figsy. Yeah, he's an old friend. Of mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Figsy, uh, you're up to bat. What you got? What you got on deck for us? Um, I forgot about that steel you just showed, Jerry. Um, and there's another PS4 one that could come close: the Bloodborne Soul Cleaver edition. Yeah, um, but me being the PS3 guy, I had to go with a couple of PS3 steel books. I can't really split these two because they're both like. Holy Grails in my collection. Um, so the first one is the Dark Souls Prepare to Die edition. Uh, this one's sealed, so it's in a slip cover. You're not going to see the actual steel book. Um, there's only 3,000 of these released. It was sold through the Zavi store in the UK. Uh, so you had to have ordered it through Zavi. Um, but yeah, it's an absolutely beautiful steel book. It's one of my favorite games of all time. So I'm very happy to have this one. Um, potentially, I may even get this graded one day. Uh, I don't really collect graded games, but if there was one in my collection that I was going to do, it would be this. Uh, so it's kept in this plastic case and it doesn't come out of that. Um, so the other one is a Spanish exclusive steelbook. Um, it was always a steelbook that I looked at like, I'm never going to get this. It was the holy grail of steelbook collecting, especially back in the early days of G2 steelbooks, because there didn't used to be that many. Uh, I was collecting steelbooks in 2015. Um, back in on the forums, there was only ever one steelbook that people talked about as the Holy Grail, and it was this. And that is the oh, yeah. very good steelbook from Spain. Uh, so this was, again, a pre-order exclusive through one retailer in Spain. Uh, there isn't a confirmation of how many there are. There's rumours of 300, 500, uh, 1,000. Uh, so take it with a grain of salt. There's anywhere between that. Um, just be aware if you are buying it today, there's actually a lot of fake versions yeah. of it on the internet. So be very careful. Um, this I will actually open it up just so you can see. Uh, it does come with a demo disc inside. 
And because of that, it has got the slot for two discs. So if you are buying it, make sure it has okay. these slots for the two discs. It has also got artwork on the inside. So again, if you are buying this, just make sure you are buying a real one, not a fake one, because it's you know it's a thousand dollar steel book, so you don't want to be buying a fake one. Thousand dollar steel book? Um thousand Australian, so probably like six, seven hundred US. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm never going to sell it. It's a holy grail. Look at her, look at her, her eyes. That's awesome. <laughs> I say, Will, what's your favorite steel book? Well, I, I brought two as well. Uh, first one sealed, and uh, like I said, I don't have any steel books in my collection, and uh, but I had to have this one because uh, the, the price I got it for is ridiculous, but uh. And uh, this is Dragon's Crown Pro. Now, what what, uh, what makes this one stand out for me? Number one, it's an Atlas title. Uh, I got this on PS3, and this is one of the few games that I actually own on two systems. I got the thing sealed. I got it cheap. It's uh, it's sealed, so this is a slip cover. But uh, it this one is uh, it's it's got some relief to it. You could uh, it's raised up. I don't know if you, you if if this does it justice but uh and the game's fun i don't know it's a vanilla wear i i i've got a boner for vanilla wear anything they put out i'm gonna buy and uh i just love this game i love the game uh i love the uh the the the, the aesthetic and uh it's just it's just pretty this is a beautiful thing i love to have it on the shelf I'm never gonna open this thing that's now, also we, a really fun couch co-op game too there's not oh, many yeah. couch co-op games anymore not many of those left um the other game is another Atlas title. Uh, this is King of Fighters uh, 14. Ooh, nice. Now, um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a big fighting game fan. I don't know if you guys know that, but uh, I love a good fighting game. Now, have you ever bought a game, and then when you get it home and you open it up, you find that there's a different game in it? Yes, is, is, is or no game happen? at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Check this out. So I bought this thing. Uh, it's got... It's got a slippy. You, everyone loves a slippy. Uh, <laughs> tons, tons of players or tons of characters on this thing. But anyway, I got this thing. I brought it home. I opened it up and check it out. It's got a Mori in it. What the fuck? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Is <laughs> wow. you know, yeah. I mean, it was like the. It's the what best are the chances? In my life. What are the chances? You know, <laughs> but no, it's a it's a, it's a lovely game. It's a lovely fighting game. Uh, I love uh, I love the uh, King of Fighters series. But uh, there you go. So those are my two uh, steel books. And this nice. and, and this has been uh, homework edition. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you'll pardon me, I I got I got to put this thing back in its case. <laughs> Can I mention a few bonus uh, entries for the homework assignment? Oh yeah, yeah, shit. Let's see. Bring him out. This one, and I also got this one thanks to Fixie. He helped me get this. But this is uh, the Shiro edition for Yakuza Four, which is only available in Australia, and it's this beautiful white steelbook. And this one is so, so, so hard to get. Absolutely ridiculous, and I love it. And then you also have the European counterpart, which is the Kuro edition, which is pretty much the same thing, but then in black. But yeah, the Shiro edition is just way isn't, more beautiful. Isn't it the same? Um... Artwork that's on the the, the Japanese console. Uh, yes, the... yeah, exactly. That's a PS3 indeed with the same artwork. Yeah, I believe that's definitely a white one. I'm not sure if there's also. I think there's also. I, I believe there's a white one, one and yeah. then there's a silver grayish one. Yeah. And then we have the Nuka Cola one. This is for uh, Fallout Four for the Nuka Cola DLC. That one looks really nice. Feel free to go to the bedroom, Will. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I'm trying to put this thing away. I accidentally hit the okay. button. Sorry. <laughs> I, will, I will grab another one. Oops. Damn, Dirk, you are thick. Merry this is the <laughs> this is the sock leave one. Is it hard? Is it a bit hard to see? Wait. I love with this so clever one the actual yeah. Bloodborne name that you're about to tell us. 
if you're buying this one, you also have to be aware of fakes because there's a lot of fakes out there right now, just like the Mirror's Edge one and also the uh, Need for Speed Undercover one, I believe. It's also the Spanish Excluder. Uh, I still want that one, but yeah, I'm, I'm a bit grab it. That one. So yeah. I'm Dude, I, I can still see PS4. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold that up again, would you? Don't, don't put yeah, sure. sure. Is, it, is, is that... Is that in the cover or on the on the case? This the PS4? yeah, the PS4 yeah. is yes, it's printed on. So it's not the slip cover or anything. It's actually on the artwork itself on the oh. steelbook. Oh shit, I've never seen that something like that before. That's right. And it's also it's a bit hard to see, but it says Bloodborne right here. Oh yeah, I can see it. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. Nice. I I put some effort into that one. Well, that was another pre-order exclusive. But if you take yourself to Bloodborne, it came out in 2015. So they would have taken pre-orders for that around early 2015, 2014, when From Software wasn't a big franchise. Yeah. So you can imagine not many people pre-ordered that steelbook. And today it's one of the biggest franchises in the world. Just one game of the year, you know. It's yep. so popular. So unfortunately, it's really expensive. And was this a pre-order one? Or was this yeah, a pre-order uh, in Germany? I thought it was an Amazon uh, German it was an Amazon pre-order. Okay, okay. I'm trying to pull this out. It opens through the side. Um, this is the new yeah, speed undercover. This is a Spanish exclusive. It's probably the third most expensive PS3 steelbook. What is the second one then? Do you know that? The Dark Souls one I just showed. Really? Really? Yeah. Oh, I have that one as well, the Dark Souls one. I still want this undercover one because I really like Need for Speed, but yeah, there is this one is at the bottom here. Um, again, there's lots funny. of fake ones, so you just, yeah, exactly. You really want to be careful, and it's really hard to tell the difference between a real one and a fake one. But it also has a double CD. It looks like I'm missing nice. one of the discs, so it possibly comes with a bonus soundtrack. Um, again, More. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't, uh, and it's complete because some. Steelbooks are like that, where they come with options to have more things. So. Or that thing's fake as fuck. <laughs> I mean, back in 2016, so I'm pretty sure it would be real, and I've had a lot of money. Oh, for man, it. I'm busting your balls, man. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. When you were buying steelbooks back then, there's no doubt in my mind that they're all real because there wasn't fake steelbooks on the market yeah. until 2019 2020 and then it got really really popular i don't know if yeah. someone bought like a steelbook printing machine or if 3d printing's just come so much in the last couple of years yeah, I mean, so much easier. yeah you just buy a steelbook from you know just buy a dvd steelbook or a blu-ray steelbook strip it and just you know paint the shit on there i've seen some good i've seen uh i was looking into the uh the mirror's edge steel book and i found a lot of fakes out there yeah. and uh, a lot of the fakes a lot of the fakes didn't they said they, they didn't list it as fake some people listed it as custom yeah this is a yeah. custom job and you know and that's great you know if it's a custom job yeah appreciate it hats off to you it looks good but if you're trying to pass it off as a real thing you're a fucking scamming piece of shit and there's no shortage of scamming pieces of shit in this world unfortunately and a lot of them, a lot of them deal in video video games. You, what was what was your last scam? Uh, you dealt with a scammer recently. What was the game? It was the Lost did, in the Rain Digital. The, the, the so Italian I paid a hundred and like fifty euros for a copy, and it arrived. <laughs> and like I, I opened it and I felt the plastic. I knew it was fake. Like it, for one, it had the PS3 strip around it where. It has Y seals, so it was the wrong plastic, the wrong <laughs> seal. I could see where it hadn't been printed out of the printer properly, and like you could see the white, which wasn't meant to be there. But I, I went through PayPal, and because this guy sent copies to six or seven other people, we all confirmed our stories, and PayPal gave us all a refund. But you know, you, you really have to fight for your money back, where, even when you're being scammed, which is unfortunate. How about you, Dirk? You ever been? Uh, you got any scam sales of being scammed? Mm, yes, a, a couple of years ago, uh, through marketplace because it's pretty much like Craigslist. So you have to transfer your money through a bank account, and then you just have to wait for your stuff, and uh, it never arrived. But um, it, I think it was Driver San Francisco in the piece three, but I got my money worth because the, the police eventually arrested the guy, and everyone got their money back. Oh shit! So that's right. <laughs> 
I got arrested. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's that's satisfaction right there. No man, I uh, I on Facebook I belong to a group. Uh, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say the name of the group, but uh, it's the admin admin admins data uh, database and basically you've already spoke about this group on the podcast. oh i have oh shit well i told her anyway basically anytime someone scams in any group they report in the admins database and everybody in the admins database goes through their freaking list of uh of members <laughs> and they find the scammer and they eject them and uh oh, it's, nice. it, yeah it's 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 a good way the 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 uh the community uh polices itself but uh you gotta I get me into this group well I got like seven groups. Yeah, but no, yeah, but you're nobody's. <laughs> you're, none of your groups are selling groups, Bigsy. Yeah, we got one. The PlayStation Buy Swap and Sell group. Oh my god, that place the is the most cool. strict rules in the world. <laughs> Dude, that is the scammiest of all groups on Facebook. It's got a you, you know the reputation, right? Are, are you sure you're talking about the right one? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm fucking with you. Dude. <laughs> I was saying, because every post I approve myself. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I I posted I posted shit up for sale in there, but it's it's international. It's a pain in the you know. I I try you know I put USA only on my post, but you know eventually some some dickhead from Poland wants me to send him the fucking game. Yeah, fuck you guys. Anyway, no, no offense to the poles, the the the, the poles, the Polish. What do we call them anyway? Polish. The Polish, the Polish. <laughs> sorry, the Poles is Pol. Is, is that a slur? Did I say something wrong? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, it's okay. I, I wouldn't be the first mistake I've made, but anyway, uh, no. Uh, yeah, do you want in? I'll get you in, figs. But usually, it's a. It's mostly all the all the all the admins are Americans, and um, it's for it's for American. It's just a way to police the police. And a lot of scammers pop up, and it's just like. Ugh. And some of these scams are just blatant. It's like, geez, this guy. Oh my god! I mean, it's it is what it is. If there's a, if there's I mean, a buck. It's pretty obvious to pick a scam these days. Yeah, if there's a if there's a buck to be stolen, someone's gonna try and do it. But anyway, I digress. But now I always use a reverse image search when I'm in doubt uh, before I buy high price items because yeah, that's an obvious way to point out the scammer. <laughs> Yeah, a, picture from somewhere else. a lot of people, they, uh, a lot of groups, they require um, with cartridge based games, they require that you show the, you open up the game and you show oh, the, yeah. board, the board of the yeah. game and uh, uh, also timestamps. So basically, you write your name and write your name and the date on a piece of paper and then, and then include it inside it with the, uh, the picture of what you're selling. And of course, uh, PayPal, friends, uh, goods oh, yeah. and Goods and services only. No other, no other forms of uh, payment are accepted. But uh, you know, even with all that, there's still people trying to get one over. It is what it is. Yeah. In saying that, with high end games, um, looking back at the ones I've bought, majority have actually been for people I know personally, friends or other collectors who I've dealt with a long time. So you can do those PayPal friends and family, and like I know I've sold expensive games that way and for me you save you're saving a lot of money on the fees because when you're selling like you know 500 dollar game it's you know 100 dollars on ebay fees or 30 40 dollars in paypal fees you know that can deter you from doing the sale where yeah. if you get a friend who's like i'll do it i'll just give you the money in your bank account it's safe blah 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 and then when you do these sort and sort of things you build up reputations um I don't know if you guys are in my Discord group, but there's certain sellers in the Discord group that I'll vouch for uh, when they post things for sale. So it gives other people confidence that, you know, I've bought off them, so-and-so have bought off them. So more likely that, you know, you don't have to worry about getting scammed and different things like that. Figsy, would you vouch for me? <laughs> no, nah, because you won't post overseas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be uh, like, don't message Will if you're from Poland. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, every so game you buy from Will comes with a movie inside. Of <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bonus. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, on that note, I will be back. <laughs> fucking assholes. I'm looking forward to Amari coming out. It gets a power release. Yeah. Next year. I actually I bought the, the fan gamer one through... Uh, video games plus in Canada, but uh, I bought as what another game 
from, I think, from VGNI Soft or something like that. So I'm waiting for those uh, games to be ready, and then they will be shipped. And by the time they will arrive, you can buy the game for 20 bucks over a year. <laughs> well, that's, that's the way with all these companies. Um, yeah. The last strictly limited game run game I bought was um, uh, Darabus, or it was one of the um, shoot 'em ups they put out, and it was expensive, and I really wanted it. By the time it came out, you could buy it in the shops cheap. Yeah. Um, Strictly Limited has partnerships with Inan Games, and most of those games they have an exclusive cover through uh, Strictly Limited, but they also get a regular retail release. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I've noticed that as well that uh, there's a lot of games that, that first they get published through a limited run company or a limited print company, and then you eventually you can buy a standard retail release because it happened to me with Bug Snacks on the PS5 as well with others. So yeah, you have to be a, a bit more mind full of that one i think well the real <laughs> yeah. issue is you're paying like 30 40 dollars for these games yeah. that don't drop yeah. in price where if it comes to a game stop or a game mania or something it might become a five dollar game mm. so it's you know it's hard to justify having this 40 dollar limited run game in your collection when you can go and buy a standard version for five bucks down the shelves and yeah it's also hardening when that happens too it depends. I'm also waiting for Stray. I bought that through I am 8-bit, and you can also buy a regular retail release right now. But the one from I am 8-bit comes with a really nice slipcover, so you have that one as a bonus. So okay, it depends a bit it. on what you want. It has some value to it, but they tend to have some extras or something like that. But yeah, you have to figure out if it's worth the extra 30 bucks or so, and you have to wait for it for a couple of months more. But it's also really hard, you know, they put up a game for pre-order and there's no way to tell whether the game will get a uh, regular retail release or not. So you sort of have to gamble on it. <clears throat> These days I've been on the side of not doing it because um, I'm noticing these um, low print titles aren't becoming expensive like they used to. Yeah. If, you look at the, uh, if you look at 2016 to 2018, most of those games today either sell for their retail price or more where if you look at that gap from like 2018 to 2022 a lot of the limited run games sell cheaper than what they were initially so you mm -hmm. can take the risk of i'm not going to buy this okay i can buy it on ebay later on and it's still going to be cheap like even the castlevania games aren't that expensive where they yeah. were like you know really popular games that everyone wants them you but look at that the might also be I think once uh, the well has dried up, they might rise in price as well. I think it's just a lot of people bought them right now to flip them on eBay. So there's too many games of them on eBay right now. And that's why the prices are low. But eventually, they will all be sold and what's left will be higher in price, I think. I agree with you there, but I don't think it'll get to the point of copies like uh, Firewatch or Saturday no. Morning RPG where, you know, they're, they're hundreds of dollars and everyone wants them in the collection. But um. <laughs> And they're great games too. It's it's surreal that those games are so valuable. <laughs> I just bought them for thirty bucks. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, I opened my copies. I played. Yeah, them. <laughs> I, I played Firewatch as well, but I, yeah, no regrets there. I mean, we're gamers, uh, so why? I'm not going to sell them anyways. So fuck it. <laughs> yeah, my attitude was, I'm going to open these games, and like, you could probably buy it on the store for less than ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is true, but yeah. If you save ten bucks on a digital copy, it's ten bucks to watch another physical game. So yeah, yeah exactly. I'm ten dollars. I also, up. I have quite a lot of rare games, but uh, if I want to play a game, I'm opening it. I don't care what game it is, unless it's something like, uh, for example, Demon's Pit or or that Arab uh, Drift Cars game or something like that. Those are real collector's items. I will keep those sealed or Griffinite Epic. But most of the limited run games or red art games or strictly limited games, if I want to play them. I'm opening it. I'm definitely unwrapping them. Yeah, and I, in the past I've done that a lot. I'm, I guess I'm not playing many of these games anymore because if it's a game um, that actually comes out, I've probably already played it, and that's yeah. why I want to buy it on limited run. Like, I'm, there's not many games that they bring out that I get excited for because mm. I, I don't know. It's just anymore, they've sort of brought them all out that I was really waiting on. There'd be a couple more, like if they did the Simpsons Arcade or. A few more, but I'm sure the games that like we want, the they haven't brought them out because there's licensing issues and they can't. Okay. Get them. What? Which one? Uh, one it was okay. a digital game on PS3. Mm, I don't think. I oh, yeah. It's a it's an arcade title. It's a four player arcade mm -hmm. title. It's like a beat 'em up. It, it was a, a digital one only. Never got a retail release. Yeah. Okay, I don't know that game. 
I, uh, I, I, it was on uh, PSN for a minute. It was on PSN store. You can't Ooh. get it anymore. Oh, that's one of those things. Like it's, it's sort of lost media now. You know? Yeah, but like Scott Pilgrim. So maybe there's a chance. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim was like he's a perfect example. Yeah. Scott Pilgrim was a game that I was buying before they announced it. Like 100, percent take my money, please print this game. You know, like we're screaming for it. It's, it's lost. Like we want to play. It. Like, imagine if they brought out PT. It'll never happen mm. because of Konami and <laughs> Jim and everything. But like you know, that would be a instant seller because people want that. Was PT? They do have a re- PT is uh, the playable teaser for Silent Hills. Was it ever finished though? Well, it's a playable teaser, so you can play that. But uh, the game was never finished. The game was officially yeah. cancelled because Kojima could boot it from Konami. Fucking Kojima. <laughs> yeah, that guy. That guy could take a shit and put it on disc, and people would buy it. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I I'm would. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, dude. Oh, man. Uh, real quick, I wanted to take this from the chat. Um, AJ's T. AJ asks about uh, how do you spot spot a fake steel book? Um, um, it's actually quite more difficult than it is because they're getting really good and. The thing is, these sellers are smart. They're selling them as custom steel books, but the thing is, they could be selling them to people that are completely not aware of that. And then these people that have paid good money for these steel books sell them, thinking it's the real thing, and that's where the problems lie. I mean, the the best the best way I found, and the way when I was doing my research on the Mirror's Edge, is just find find an original and uh, just just you know make do do your homework, just compare it. A lot of them uh, don't have the uh, the inside, like you said, the uh, the inside printed. the The inside isn't printed on, or they don't have the uh, the two disc slots. For an example, of for I'm talking about uh, Mirror's Edge, and uh, or they it, the Mirror's Edge has a uh, it has a, a PAL um, age restriction on the cover. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there you go. I mean, all you got find find an original. Oops. That's not that's not on the slippy though, is it? It doesn't have a slip. It's just a steel book. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, well, you just, you just I believe the original, the Spanish Mirror's Edge, it came as a two pack with the game. It came wrapped and sealed, basically like this. So you have to have a two pack. Uh, so if you get if you're finding a Mirror's Edge steel book that is uh, shrink wrapped, that's a fake one percent because that never came that way. You're correct. So um and. The bonus disc was in the steel book, and the game and the manual were in the um, yeah, were in the, game. In the regular so case. I actually, yeah. I actually put my own game and manual in this steel book. That's why it's in here, where it came with the bonus disc. I I, I find that annoying because uh, a lot of steel books they're just you know they're just empty and they just give them away. You know, but no, I, I if I'm buying a steel book, I want the game, I want the case, uh, you know, I want everything. It should, yeah, just be, it, should, it should just be a, a substitution for the plastic case, but no, a lot of times it's just here's here's the game, here's the steel book. No, see, fuck that, just put it all together. Yeah, but yeah. these people aren't designing them for people like us. They're making them as a bonus extra. So think of like Call of Duty, perfect example. Um, a lot of people who sell copies of Call of Duty will sell just a steel book because they threw the case out. They're like, I got a cool steel book. I'm gonna put my game in there. You know, they've already thrown the case in the bin, blah, blah, blah. And that's that makes them happy. And that, you know, there's probably majority of people collecting I'm buying steel books to do that over us collectors. Oh I mean, it, it, you know, it's making me question it because I got this uh this thing. I mean okay, I took a Mori out of it, but did somebody throw out the case? Is is, is that is that what happened to me? Uh, I don't I'm know. pretty sure that was released like that. Well yeah. that has a barcode, so that would have had to have come like that. Yeah, that's supposed to be that way. It's the limited edition, I think, of the game because there was also a collector's edition, but it's supposed to come like that, Will. There wasn't a separate one with uh, just a plastic box or something like that. Where a lot of steel books that don't have slip covers were just bonuses. Yeah. So if you have the slip cover and everything, you know, you can put it on the shelf and actually sell it. It's got all the ratings and everything like that. Um, so I guess that's a good thing to just visually think about. Could this be sold? Like, has it got the barcode? Does it have the ratings? Would it legally be allowed to put on the shelf? If it's a no, then it's missing something. You know, would it come with a game or a slip cover or a box or something else? All right. Well, there you go. Hope we uh, hope we answered your question there, AJ. 
just on that, AJ, um, you're welcome to like reach out to me, Derek, any other collector that's been on the show. I'm sure any of us will happily help you out if you're tr potentially buying one of these grails and you want to know if it's fake or real. Yeah, yeah don't message me. I can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I didn't, I didn't say your name, Will. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, uh, hold, I'll be like, oh, fuck, hold on. Let me ask Figzy. <laughs> I have to agree with AJ, though, because I also wouldn't burn my hands on uh, getting a Mirror's Edge or uh, the Saw Cleaver one or the Mirror's... Uh, the, what's the other one? The Nifo Spirit one? Because I honestly can't tell the difference. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, unless you buy some... Uh, someone with uh, with lots of paint scratches and all sorts of things, and you, yeah, <laughs> you can see that it's original, but it's rusted. Well, that's another rotten. thing. Like it, it's really, really hard to find the Mirror's Edge without scratches. My my yeah. copy's got, you know, there's minor minor um, rust marks oh. on it, oh and it's one God. of the best I've ever seen. I think I've seen like uh, there's an Austrian co collector. He's got a perfect mirror's edge, but he's one oh. of the biggest steelbook collectors in the world. I don't think I've seen another one that's perfect, to be honest. And you know what? On the, on that note, I'm going to segue into uh, another one of our segments here on the show. Uh, uh, me, it, it's meme time. Uh, I, I, I actually oh, check it out. Check it out. Here we go. Hey, it's meme time <laughs> with Will. <laughs> that's me. And uh, yeah, that's uh, if, you, if you know this meme. But anyway. Speaking of steel books, um, this 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 one was inspired by uh, last week's guest. Uh, let me see if I can find it. And this is steel book tetanus <laughs> edition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately, so in in some more humid climates, this is how you find a steel book. So uh, this is an original and inspired by. Uh, by Luis, uh, Luis's appearance last week. So, Luis, this one's uh, this one's all you. So, there's the Steelbook Tennis Edition, <laughs> and uh, also uh, along the same lines, Steelbooks often come with slippies. And uh, this is an old meme, uh, but uh, I can't take credit for this one. But as you know, everyone loves a slippy. <laughs> John Cox. <laughs> <laughs> this is John. This is John Cox specialty. Yeah. Do you know what that photo is from? Uh, <laughs> so that photo was the day that I got the Buzz Russia game in the mail, and that was my reaction to getting the last Buzz game. <laughs> oh man, uh, this one, um, this one plays on. Uh, this one speaks for itself. So, uh, when you pay for an hour and you still have fifty-eight minutes left, so <laughs> anyway, there's that one. And uh, keeping with the sexual theme, um, Pokemon porn. This is me. <laughs> And this is also me after I finish. <laughs> uh, this one made me laugh. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, yeah, here's this. This, this one. This one makes me laugh because I, I we've all we've all we've all flipped games, you know. And uh, when the guy from Facebook Marketplace sees your post selling the game you just bought from him from ten for ten dollars, now selling for one hundred. Uh, <laughs> We've all done it. Uh, it is what it is. And uh, oh shit, you, you brought it on. And uh, I brought it on. You can tell. <laughs> this one, uh, this is, this give, is give, a, give some context I, before you show it. <laughs> Figzy, um, Figzy, as you know, is a video game YouTuber, uh, but he's also just a, a flipping YouTuber. And he talks about he, he brings in things and he flips them on eBay. Um, one time, I caught Figzy bought a. He also sold a preg. He also he also bought a pregnancy book, and I gotta make a meme for that one as soon as I find that. But uh, I sold that too. <laughs> no, you did. You sold that. Uh, what to expect when you're expecting? Yeah. But uh, anyway, here uh, this is this is the meme. Uh, excuse, <laughs> excuse me. Nice. This is this is when the uh, the uh, the church folk visited Pigsy, and there you go. <laughs> Uh, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it. But uh, anyway, this has been meme time. <laughs> uh, I'll, 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 I'll try. I'll, I'll dig up some more for next week. But uh, yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> Just uh, it, 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 this shit makes me laugh. If it doesn't, if it makes you laugh, great. If it doesn't, yeah, fuck you. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Derek, you've been chatting um, about a trade that we did on 
earlier this year. Oh, yeah. Not really a trade, more or less a package I got for you. It was um, it was probably one of the best packages I've ever sent someone. Um, one of the games I wanted to talk about was Blue's Clues. Um, yes. And that, that particular copy uh, has more than a story behind it. So um, you bought this copy of Blue's Clues. It's a rare game. It's probably one of the rarest Australian exclusive games. It's like a two to $300 PAL game, um, Australian exclusive kids game. Anyway, so um, Derek bought a copy off one of my friends. <laughs> anyway, this actual copy that he bought, I was trying to buy like a year ago. <laughs> <on Facebook. laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to buy it from a lady who was selling a lot of games and uh, I made a deal with her and then she's like sorry I'm, I'm actually going to sell it to someone else because they're going to buy all of them and that person was my friend who then sold it to you oh. <laughs> <laughs> which then I got to hold the copy so it, it, it went around full circle I thought that was cool Blues but, Clues really? Blues yeah. Clues is, is an expensive it's, it's, it's yeah this this there's two Blue's Clues in PAL territory. One is a super dirt common one, and the other one is called uh, yeah, Blue's Clues Big Bears Musical or something like that. And that was only released in Australia, so it's a PAL exclusive. And yeah, you can only get it in Australia, so every PAL collector needs that for their full set, which is why it's very rare and pretty expensive. Hey, but Fixie, that friend, didn't uh, he offer the game to you? Never thought well, about buying it. Yeah, but being a reseller, he wanted top dollar for it, and it was like okay. ten dollars at the time. You know, I wanted it. For okay. Time, so. Yeah, because the price wasn't that bad compared to other ones out there. <laughs> he offered me a good deal, but yeah, um, my thing for the PS One, I'm not going for a full set. I'm going for a curated set. So the yeah. expensive titles I want are going to be titles that I really want. They're not going to be kids' games that are expensive because okay. collectors are after them. I don't have any Phoenix games for the PS One. I don't have an intention of adding one to the collection unless, you know, I find it for $5 at a garage sale. All right. Yeah, and well, since you live in Australia, you do have a chance of actually finding the game out in the wild. And yeah, my chances exactly. are pretty much zero right here. Uh, just on Australian games, have you got the Grand Theft Auto pack? Nope. Oh, are you after that no. one? Um, yeah, well, not officially because it's really expensive. If I'm not correct, if, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, if I have a chance to get a good deal on it, I wouldn't mind. But um, I'm not necessarily after it or anything. I'm it goes for, for one person at the moment. So after uh, I get him a copy, I can um, I can let you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice, it would be cool. But that one goes for a couple of hundred, right? Um, unfortunately, like copies are sold for over a thousand dollars in Europe. Wow. Yeah, over <laughs> in Australia, it's a like a five hundred dollar game, but it's 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 not rare. Like it pops up, a okay. lot of people have it. You know, it's just one of those things that people have it and are aware of what they have and are aware yeah. of. Europeans will pay top dollar for this because you know it wasn't released over there, and it's Grand Theft Auto. So it's you know, it's, it's if it's not your favorite series, it's everyone's second favorite series. Yeah. I, uh, it, it just boggles the mind how many um, children's games are uh, rare and collectible. I just don't, I don't get it. I mean, I guess the Barbie, uh, the PS3 Barbie, and the, her, her sisters and ponies and something. I don't know. Have we, what game am I talking about, Figsy? Yeah, uh, no Barbie doubt. and a sister's puppy rescue. Oh, puppy rescue! It's not ponies; it's puppies. Oh, but that's well, the PS3 one. The the one that we've chatted about on the podcast previously, the DS game, one oh. actually just sold on eBay for four thousand five hundred Canadian dollars. Confirmed this sale. Is, so. This is wrong. Barbie Insane. should Barbie should never fetch that much money. I don't get it. <laughs> if you're no. a free DS collector in America, <laughs> good luck. Good yeah. Luck wow. <laughs> But does every set have one of those games that's just ridiculously expensive and it pretty much yeah ruins all your hard work because you got to get that set if you want to if you got to get that game sooner or later if you want to complete the set so yeah what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, there's actually tons of those games out there now these days. You look at um like the prototypes back in the day like so many of oh, yeah. them are tens of thousands of dollars today. It's just like is it really that that much? It's just mm. Only a few of them, but it's it's not like it was a real release or something, you know. <laughs> I actually do have a prototype right here. Yes, it's a little bit planet on the PlayStation Ooh, Portable. 
Is it? Is it? Can you read it or not? Is it? I can't read it. I can say twist it. it a little bit. Just twist it. Just the hair, because you got that glare on it. Yeah. What, what, what's the game? What What it says? It's a little bit panel on the PlayStation Vita, and it says test sample uh, from Sony USA. Um, I got this through a trade with someone. Because I had a debug version of Little Bit Planet 2 and he wanted that to derive the code from it. And he offered me this one for it. That's really nice. <laughs> is the uh is the I think I've asked this before, but I forgot. Is the is the PSP is it region free? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yes. So, so the PS2 is the last uh region lock system for the uh PlayStation then. Yeah. I'm happy that Sony changed because uh, now, yeah, it's, it's so nice that you can buy games in Asia and in India and in Australia and in America. So what 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 Sony needs to do is just make a uh, make all their games, you know, put all languages on any game, uh, every game. Yeah. It, it'd just be simple. I mean, I don't know exactly how many. Uh, I, I guess it'd be a question for James Johnson, but how many games for the PS5 have been released? But I'm gonna guess that. In America or in Japan, there are more games for the PS5 than there are in any other region. No, I'm not sure. No, limited run games. Limited run games make America the most produced game for PS4, um, for yeah. the Vita. I'm talking PS5. I'm, I'm talking strictly PS5. I believe yeah. the PS5 isn't that big in Japan yet, so I'm not that sure that there are that many. Uh, Japanese exclusive PS5 games yet. Hey Dirk, is is Figsy frozen on your screen? So uh, pretty much yes. every system. Oh, oh there, there he is. We're <laughs> back. <laughs> You're frozen for a minute. Someone was someone was calling, uh, making a phone call in your home, uh, and, and you froze <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> it's still come up with like one Wi-Fi bar, so I don't know if that's me or the actual connection or. Yeah, it could, it could be me. I I I played it on my the uh, the PS4 downstairs is hard uh, hardwired to the uh, what do they call that the router, but unfortunately up here I am on Wi-Fi. I don't uh, I don't suggest playing online games uh, <laughs> unless you're hardwired. <laughs> I just yours... touched on one of the um, comments from chat relates to what we were just talking about. Uh, so Fun Size 1991 was saying all of Australia's games are a mismatch of NTSC and Power Regions mixed together. This includes case artwork, even the versions we get. And I'll just elaborate on this. So this is really from the PS3 onwards. If you go into an EB game store, for example, you could find 10, 20, possibly even 100 games that are actually not Australian versions. They'll have a sticker on it. It'll be American or it'll be UK or it'll be German. But they're completely able to be sold over here. Uh, so a lot of games that we didn't get released over here, they actually imported a copy. Uh, so some of them were American, some of them were UK. Like there isn't a discrepancy between what they did. I don't know if it was just cheaper to import, you know, a thousand American games for this game, and then suddenly another release comes out. It's cheaper to import UK copies. But it happens so often that, like, you'll find. You go into an EB game store, you can buy a case that's PAL and they'll so they'll give you a disc that's NTSC and that's okay to them. Oh well. <laughs> or there'll be like a sticker over it. And it, it happens all the time. You'll get an NTSC manual, a PAL disc and a PAL case. Do you uh, pit, do you pitch a fit when they do that to you, Pixie? I'll make him give me the right one. I'll show him a photo of what it looks like and be like, no, this is what the disc looks like. <laughs> No wonder you've been banned so many from so many shops <laughs> over there. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, no, I can't. I can't think of a. I can't think of a, a situation where I ever went and bought a you know bought a game and then I got an NTS or a PAL game inside of an NTSC case. But uh, yeah, um, you guys are, I guess, a mixed breed over there. And in, in the well, in with region three, like to the average gamer, it shouldn't be a problem, right? It's going to work on your system, so the average person is probably not going to comply. But to have they started? To, have they started doing that since PS4 era or PS5 era? Or PS3 era, they started doing. Really? It. Well. Um, but again, it was on the games that were imported. So, a lot of our games didn't get releases. Um, a perfect example would be 
No More Heroes on PS3. We didn't get an Australian version where every copy is a UK copy, yeah. but it has an Australian sticker on the front. But the sticker's on the case, not on the artwork. Sometimes it's on the artwork. <laughs> oh, man. So, um, so if you peel it off, if, if, you, if you can. You're not it, touching that one. You're peeling it off, you're ripping the artwork. <laughs> And the off topic question, but um, being the eve of the World Cup, I wanted to get you guys tips on who's going to win. I also opened it up to chat so you guys can vote who you think is going to win Argentina or France? USA. And who are we going for, guys? USA. USA. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies, Will. They got knocked out by the Netherlands. <laughs> Shut up. It never <laughs> happened. <laughs> I'm rooting for Argentina because uh, I'm competing with my colleagues uh, in a game where we have to predict the results. And I predicted Argentina as a world champion and I might actually win. So uh, I'm hoping that Argentina takes it because I can <laughs> make fun of them for the next four years. <laughs> I, but, I'm, I'm, I'm also rooting for Argentina because uh, they're close to my home country, Panama. And uh, it's it, yeah, f- fuck the French. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if there are any French people in the chat... Uh, Fuck you. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I'm shooting for Argentina. How about you, Frank Pigs? Uh, I've never supported Argentina in my life, but I'm going for them because I'd love to see Messi win. Unfortunately, if I was putting money on it, I'd be putting money on France. Yeah, so. me too. Me too. What right is- now, if I had to decide, I, I'm guessing France will take it. It'd be like two versus one or something. What are the uh, what are the uh, what are the odd makers saying? What's uh... The, the, the betting people, what are they? Who are they betting on? I'm not sure. Me neither. I think it will be evenly tied. Is Argentina? Uh, so I, chat I, gave it's fifty fifty. So chat split down the middle. Yeah. yeah. I, gotta, I gotta look this up because I think it'll be very close in the betting, yeah. um, and it probably depends on who you're going for. Every market's different these days. Let's see what Las Vegas says. Uh, so uh, France versus Argentina. Favorite. Scared by all. What's up, Jay? Who's favorite to win? Uh, Sportsbook lists Argentina as a slight favorite. Oh, really? Well. Interesting. Well, I, I yeah. should probably put some money on it, that logic. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, it's 50 50. Uh, it depends on who you ask. It's 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 like at 50 50. So, yeah, it's a toss up. Uh, all my money, uh, my money's Argentina. So, there we go. My money's in video <laughs> games. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'll bet you your collection against my collection. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you can win a Mori. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. You win 100 copies of a Mori. <laughs> that one will be missing. I'm sorry. I only got talking one about, goddamn copy. Talking about the World Cup, have you ever seen this one before? No, this is the HMV exclusive uh, version of World Cup 98. And this one comes with a sort of a Hulu graphic. Cover. It's all cool. shiny and stuff. That's nice, huh? I have seen it before. We won sh- that World Cup, you, you showed that to us about an hour ago. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. No, I uh, no, I'm not. Uh, I play. I, I played hockey games, but for a minute. But no, I'm not a sports fan guy. Okay. Yuli Girl says France. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to think. No one else. No one else cares. <laughs> <laughs> I think what soccer? Got to buy. A copy I didn't say. Got to buy a copy of Mori before I'm on the. <laughs> <laughs> Is AJ AJ's AJ's NTSC right? Yeah, he's Canadian. Canadian, or am I uh, thinking? I know he's East Coast, so I'm not entirely sure where. AJ, what? Oh, I'm, I'm waiting for his response. AJ. <laughs> AJ Canadian Austin or American? Like here. <laughs> <laughs> He'll answer in a minute. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, man. AJ will be on the show in a month, guys. So that'll be pretty exciting. Oh, he's he's from the south. He's from Tennessee. There you go. Now, uh, Derek, what games have you been playing at the moment, man? Um, I'm playing uh, Need for Speed Unbound, and I'm playing Tam Tam with my brother because 
have you heard of Tam Tam? It's like an online Pokemon game, and you can play it in co-op. That's pretty cool. Oh, so I you have two tamers, yeah. and uh, yeah, both of you control t three uh, Tam Tams or Pokemons. So you can uh, play it online, and it's yeah, that's pretty fun actually. So you can use more tactics <clears throat> than in Pokemon. You can, for example, uh, yeah. I'm attacking a certain opponent, and my brother can be attacking the other opponent. Opponent, or uh, yeah, you can you can work out tactics a bit, <clears throat> and that's Is pretty interesting. PS Five or PS Four? Yeah, PS Five game. I'm not sure if it's available on PS Four as well. It might be. I'm not entirely sure. Is it is are any PS Five games just so advanced that they cannot be played on a PS Four? Um, because it yeah, requires a PS Five controller. And uh, Returnal as well, because it, it it uses the controller and the sounds and everything in the 3D audio. But, Demon's um, Souls as well. Yeah. And yeah. also, Need for Speed Unbound is also available only on PS5 and Xbox Series X, and not on PS4, for whatever reason. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> well, 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 yeah, okay, my qu- okay so my, qu- but my, my question still stands. Is there any game that's so technologically advanced? advanced? It can't be played on PS4. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think Astro, AJ, AJ, AJ just nailed it. Astro's Playroom. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> so, well, so 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 it all so it's all it's all dependent on the controller then. Is that, is yeah, so it's only based on like different things that this controller to do. So it's got like haptic feedback and movements and so it's it, what you're trying to say, Will, is like there's nothing advanced enough that the PS4 won't run it, and that's still true. But it's it's all it's all about the the uh, the special the the bells and whistles that are coming yes. from from this controller. Mm, okay. yeah, that's nothing I, too I, exciting. You did all do. Because right. I, yeah, awesome. Blade was awesome. That was an awesome game. Because <clears throat> I, I I don't see the PS5 is that far of a technological leap. Uh, past the PS5. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, Cyberpunk the PS5 exclusive doesn't work on PS4. This shit, the Cyberpunk doesn't work on anything. One of our guests was saying it works on the PS4 Pro though, so there is that. Well, yeah, so they pass they pass that thing up then. But dude, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, it, today, if a game if a game launches and it's just a piece of bullshit on launch, except for Pokemon being the exception. The game is ruined. Uh, Cyberpunk. What was it? What was the other game that No Man's was, Sky was at least broken? Yeah. yeah, No Man's Sky. If it because it, it, it's all about it's all about the community. The community takes a crap on it. And there you go. It's a piece of crap. It is what it is. We got Michael in here from Darwin. What's up, Michael? We got a couple of people watching from the Northern Territory, which is really cool. I was going to say, what, what is NT? Australia, so. Is, is, is you guys have states or provinces over there? Uh, we have states and territories, and Northern Territory is one of the two territories in Australia. All right. well, welcome, yeah. welcome, welcome, Michael. I mean, Michael's been on here before. We've seen him from. We've seen him yeah. a lot. Um, Chaos is saying I have six <laughs> copies of Amori. May have another free before I come on. The show. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> We're not we're not we're not stopping until Amori is a five hundred dollar game. So yeah. let's go. Artificially artificially uh, inflating the price. Is it our, if everyone agrees, is it artificially inflating the price? I don't know. I'm not agreeing until I get a copy. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. at least, yeah, well. <laughs> someone uh someone is not someone is what is it? What's the guy's name? Cat is it cat something? It's not fan fan gamer is the one who published it over here or the uh, publisher over here, but no, he said you mentioned his name the other day, the um, Amori guy. No, nah, it's not coming to me. I I, uh, I looked it up. <laughs> anyway, he needs to sponsor us. In fact, uh, if anybody out there is listening and they want to sponsor us, or if anybody out there is listening and they want to be a uh, an intern, please uh, contact uh, contact Figzy. Uh, leave me alone. <laughs> Just on that note, we have every monetization turned off for the podcast so that you guys get no ads so if you do want to help us out feel free to jump in we're doing this all for free we don't make anything <laughs> from the podcast <laughs> and that's because like i don't want ads like, if you're listening to a show and it plays ads every 10 minutes it's gonna be shit you know i'd rather people enjoy the show <laughs> <laughs> I, 
gentlemen, I'm go on that note. I'm gonna I'm gonna wish I, wish you all good night. Uh, Dirk, uh, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a it's been a pleasure, and uh, thank You're you for sh- sharing for parts of your collection with us, Pigsy. Nice. Anything you want to add? Yeah, I was just gonna thank uh, Derek for coming on the show. Uh, be sure to go check out his Instagram, guys, because he's got some amazing games he posts on there, and you've got some really good content. Um, we have Denver Gaming coming on Friday, Thursday show. <laughs> that will be our last show before Christmas. We won't have a show next Sunday for Christmas, so be sure to check that one out. And um, yeah, thanks again for coming on the show, Derek. Um, well, have a good night, and um, we'll see everyone in the next episode. Thank you very much for having me. It was a blast. All right, Dirk, man. We'll catch you. Have a good one, guys. Good night, everybody. Sleep well.